In this video, we will show you how rapidly melatonin levels decline as we age, and by the time we get 55 years old, there is basically not much left. Likewise, we will show you a number of diseases that actually very often occur on a low melatonin level. This seems to be no coincidence. If you have been following this channel for longer, then you know that melatonin has been around for billions of years and that it is the protector of all life, humans, animals, and plants alike. Each cell of your body has melatonin and it sits right next to the mitochondria, the powerhouse of your cell. But why do plants have melatonin, you might wonder? Well, plants use melatonin when there is a real danger like a drought or flooding, and then the melatonin within the plant gets active. It is a survival mechanism. In this context, it is easy to understand that we, as humans, need melatonin very badly, especially when we get older and our levels decline naturally. According to the experts in this field, Professor Russell Ryder and Dr. Klinghardt, it is necessary to use high doses of melatonin. Small amounts, like the three milligrams melatonin sleeping pill, have no effect except for a faster falling asleep. High doses, however, can change your entire life. Don't worry, you will not get 150 years old, as some ridiculous slogan suggests. But indeed, we hear more and more often that people are free of any ailments and diseases after a while using high doses of melatonin. Professor Ryder says he has been using high doses of melatonin himself for over 28 years, and he has nothing, not one age-related disease. Dr. Klinghart uses high doses of melatonin for his patients, treating any kind of neurological disease. Have a listen. And so there is a German researcher who heals pretty much any neurological disease just with one tool, and that is melatonin. But this is not two or three milligrams. This is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, up to 6,000 milligrams. The ALS, we give 6,000. Uh, with most the common, the children get 80 milligrams. That's the working dose. Most adults need a lasting dose of about 300. It's the anti-aging tool for you the older folks. Transdermally, yeah. that's the trick. The transdermal melatonin is given between dinner and bedtime, an hour or two before sleep time. Does hardly increase, change your sleep. Uh, most people don't feel any change initially. Um, but what it does is phenomenal. Those of you know a little bit of biochemistry, the, the, the worst thing that happens in inflammation, uh, in neurological illness, is the creation of peroxynitrite. Melatonin, in my opinion, should be more widely used because of the misuse of light, and especially during aging. Uh, there's just so much experimental evidence that would suggest that we could reduce the untoward health effects that we experience with aging by supplementing with melatonin. Uh, for, well, this is one example. I'm 85 years old. I've been taking melatonin for 28 years, knock on wood. I'm in still very good health, but there's a lot of my colleagues who have worked on melatonin who do the very same thing and are doing very well. I would say that's not a controlled study, but animal studies unequivocally show that deferring melatonin related, deferring age related diseases is possible with melatonin. Not only cancer, neurodegenerative diseases. I'm just writing a paper now on Alzheimer's and melatonin. Um, and that's a, a, a very, very debilitating condition. Always take it at night okay. before bedtime because that's the time melatonin would normally be increasing. I have taken melatonin during the day, and there's justification for that. Again, this isn't a recommendation necessarily, but we know that the cancer cell metabolism is different at night than during the day. It has a better positive metabolism at night that's directly related to the availability of melatonin. So cancer cells in some regards are more cancerous during the day than they are at night. And they are less cancerous at night because they are exposed to melatonin, which changes their metabolism called the Warburg effect. So 
in some cancer cases, it may be worthwhile to take melatonin during the day. Can you imagine that such a thing like hair loss comes very often along with low melatonin levels? Meaning, very often people who have hair loss, they tend to have also low melatonin levels. Exactly this is the case, as this doctor from Germany reports. His name is Dr. Hartner and he is just another expert on the subject of melatonin. He treats his patients with melatonin and says, that most of them have an urgent lack of melatonin. There is a widespread lack of melatonin as there is a widespread lack of vitamin D from the sun. Most of our pineal glands are no longer working. In the following we will show you some PubMed research papers, which demonstrate what influence low melatonin level have on the respective illness. Alzheimer's disease. There seems to be a clear correlation between Alzheimer's disease and a low level of melatonin. There are 694 research papers on that topic alone. Melatonin and cancer. There are many published studies on that. We get 3,190 results and even the NIH confirms that melatonin is a very promising molecule for various kinds of cancer when it comes to treatment as well as for protection. Melatonin and depression. When it comes to depression, we get 1,928 results, and they confirm that most people with depression have also low melatonin levels. Melatonin and the heart. People who get a heart attack have low melatonin levels. We can study this over and over again, there are 1,078 published papers on that. Melatonin and virus infections. There are 205 scientific papers published on the C virus and melatonin. In fact, it is old news, that many hospitals around the world use higher dosages of melatonin to safeguard their nurses and doctors. In this paper of PubMed it says, that serum levels of melatonin are significantly lower in HIV infected individuals. Melatonin and HIV, AIDS. This one is very interesting, because Dr. Hartner says here, that he has treated HIV patients in his clinic with big success using 200 mg melatonin as a suppository. If you know someone in this situation, maybe you want to forward this video. We put a link in the description where he can contact Dr. Hartner. I have already treated HIV patients with good results using 200 mg melatonin as a suppository. So that is also possible.